the president of Georgia Military College, Lieutenant General William B. Caldwell IV. If, if you don't mind, please join me again in a great round of applause for all of our Coast Guard scholars and our Distinguished Order of Servant Leadership Award. As you know, today is a special day as we celebrate Memorial Day. Today we're gonna remember and honor the ordinary men and women of extraordinary strength and courage who have fought and died, protecting our country and our freedoms that we so enjoy. So who better fitting to invite to be our guest speaker today than Admiral Kurt Tidd. His biographical sketches on each of your programs, you can sit there and read it, but let me just add a few parts to it. He's a husband, he's a father, He's an accomplished military officer, a Naval Academy graduate, who would later become an Olmsted Foundation scholar. He's commanded at every level in the United States Navy at sea, all the way up to a carrier strike group during operations enduring freedom in the Middle East. He's done and worked on every key assignment on shore to include serving in the Middle East during combat operations over there too. And he's a father. He's a father who has a child, as you heard today, who's made that decision to also serve her country, probably emulating what her father has so well modeled at home and her mother did too as a retired military officer from the United States Navy or herself. So it's no doubt that we today have found a man who has both served overseas, has put men and women in harm's way, understands the challenges, the agony that families go through with the loss of one, and themselves both have served in uniform, continue to serve, and today have just now sent their daughter off to do the same and follow in their footsteps. So Admiral Kurt Ted, it's with great pleasure we welcome you today, sir. All right, bend your knees. General Caldwell, thank you very much for that kind introdu introduction. And I would just like to extend a very special thanks to the entire family of the Georgia Military College, and especially this 138th Corps of Cadets for this special ceremony. Like I said, having stood in military formations many times over the last four decades, and on warm spring days too, I will keep my remarks very short and I will keep them to the point. Memorial Day is something of a paradox. Nothing could be more sobering, more somber, or more sorrowful than the task of remembering our nation's fallen. Yet at the same time, nothing could be more uplifting, more inspiring, nor more humbling than honoring their service and their sacrifice. Now I've had the privilege of being surrounded by service members my entire life. I grew up in a Navy family, hearing my dad and his shipmates talk about the places they'd been and the things that they had seen and done. They absolutely mesmerized me and my brother with their stories. They talked about exotic sounding locales like Wonsan and the Taichin Islands, about Da Nang and the Mekong Delta. They talked about grueling deployments and battles fought, and they talked about best friends they lost and they talked about what it meant to serve on a deeply personal level, the country they loved so much. These conversations echoed those of thousands that came before them. Stories about the beaches of Normandy, the deserts of Africa, the mud fields of Okinawa. And before that, along the French Riviera rivers in Champagne and the forests of Belleau Wood. A generation later, these conversations would be about the valleys of Somalia, the mountains of Kandahar, and the dusty streets of Baghdad. But no matter the conflict or the decade, one thing holds constant and true for every single service member telling their tales, then and now, and always. It's a story of service, and it always begins the same way, by stepping forward. Despite the enormous dangers, every year, a small group of men and women will step forward, will raise their hands and say, here am I, send me. Some of you here today 
will join this group. You'll step forward when over 99% of your fellow countrymen will not. You will step forward like the men and women who stepped forward after Pearl Harbor. You'll step forward like those that stepped forward after North Korean troops crossed the 38th parallel. And like millions who stepped forward after 9-11. You'll step forward because you, like generations before you, want to be part of something that's bigger. You will step forward and you will raise your hands in front of our nation's flag and you'll swear to support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies. You will absorb the principles of unselfish servant leadership that will serve you well when you face an uncertain and a complex security environment. You will learn to build and to maintain trust to inspire others to achieve what they thought was beyond reach, to never leave a fallen comrade nor betray the public trust. You will learn to always do the harder right, regardless of the cost, and to uphold our ethical and moral standards, regardless of the situation. And like the 42 million other Americans who've answered the call to serve, you will go forth with your new haircuts, your new uniforms, your new training and guidance. You will go forth with your new friends, your shipmates, your battle buddies, your wingmen, and you will be steadied by your new discipline. You will go forth to cutters and to ships, to other bases and other places, carrying with you your hopes and dreams, carrying with you our hopes and our dreams. And you will go forth and you will uphold the principles our nation was founded upon, liberty and justice and the right to say what we want, to think what we want, and to worship how we want, to be free from tyranny, from attack, and from injustice, the right to seize the opportunities and the promise that our nation has for every single one of us. You will live these ideals. You will embody them in the very fiber of your being. You will form bonds of trust and kinship with your fellow service members that will be difficult to describe and impossible to break. And as so many of our valiant warriors now and in the past, you will defend those ideals with your lives if called upon, ensuring that our precious rights of liberty are preserved and passed on to those that follow after us. Eventually, after long months of separation from family and friends and loved ones, you'll come home. But of course, not everyone will come home. And in a few weeks, when we gather as a nation to celebrate the blessings of freedom, we will think of this. We will hold in our hearts those families who have an empty chair at the table, an empty place in their heart, an empty space in their lives. We will pause for a moment and we will be thankful. We will pause for a moment and we will be humbled because we know that we owe those families and their loved ones a debt of gratitude beyond our ability to express and far beyond our ability to ever fully repay. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the paradox of Memorial Day. A day for sadness, but also a day for gratitude. A day to remember the fallen, and a day to honor and celebrate everyone who steps forward and who continues to step forward. Now I'd like to close by sharing a personal belief. Something that I think about whenever I meet a new recruit. When I see that same determination that drive and selfless sacrifice that has lit the eyes and filled the hearts of every service member that's gone before them. I see it in the eyes of some of you today. I believe that America has the greatest gift in the world, freedom. I also believe we have another gift, nearly as precious. Our Coast Guardsmen, soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines, and the civilians who work side by side with them to safeguard that gift and to guarantee that no force on this earth 
can ever steal it away. Rest assured, America will remain the country that we hold so dear, but only so long as we never run short of young men and women who are willing to look beyond their own self-interest and comfortable lives. Men and women who are willing to go into the darkest and most dangerous places on earth to defend us against those that would do us harm and who ask for nothing in return. For that, our nation owes them everything on Memorial Day and on every day. Thank you.